Some comic fans may say that the Hulk is the strongest there is. Those people have not met the maestro. Some versions of your favorite superheroes can be cruel, but the ruler of Earth 9200 is the meanest Hulk in the multiverse. Maestro, Hulk Origins. So how did we get from the Hulk, hero and avenger of Earth, to Maestro, the feared ruler of dystopia? Well, as he pounds on a sentinel with some other heroes, Bliss fills Banner's soul. Life is good. It just could not possibly get any better. Betty and my sons and I are happy. Every so often I get to get out and stretch my legs. Hard to believe. But things get really weird when Hulk awakens from the simulation in a mysterious facility and runs into AIM forces. Led by an elderly MODOK, the villain let Hulk know that all of Earth's heroes died thanks to nuclear war, World War III. Hulk leapt to the surface to confirm the truth for himself. The world, including Betty and his sons, was gone. The Hulk then embarked on a trip across the ruined United States, visiting landmarks like Mount Rushmore. At Washington Mall, he saw a kid going into a trap door near the Jefferson Memorial. He followed the boy and discovered a bunker housing a group of survivors led by a machine man. It is here that Hulk first learned about Dystopia, the city formerly known as New York, and its leader, the Maestro. Upon arriving in Dystopia, he immediately caught the attention of the authorities thanks to his legendary status. It made more sense when the Maestro revealed himself as Hercules, the Hulk's old friend. Elsewhere, an elderly Rick Jones wandered around his personal museum of heroic relics. He had gathered things like Thor's hammer, Wolverine's skeleton, and Professor X's chair, but the best relic of all had just arrived. His granddaughter Janice informed him that the Hulk was back. Following a bear hug from Hercules, Hulk squared off with his old rival. The two traded punches, but Hulk dipped when he got the chance of a lifetime. Rick Jones ushered him into his macabre museum, where the two barely caught up before arguing. Jones begged his friend to oppose Hercules, who only cared about his own pleasure. But Hulk saw no value in ordinary people anymore. Ordinary people destroyed the world, Rick. Not the leader, not the Red Skull, none of the despots we fought and died against. Ordinary damn people brought it down around their bloody ears. To make matters worse, after Hulk was led to Alchemax, he began creating an army of mechanical war dogs and clone soldiers. A few months later, he unleashed them on Hercules. The war for dystopia had begun. Hulk's dogs descended upon the scattered citizens that refused his rule. Hercules took them on for a while before facing Hulk himself. At one point, the Olympian even delivered a beating reminiscent of Loki's in the first Avengers film. But this time, it's Hulk who comes out looking puny. Hercules pulverizes the Hulk. Banner decided to give up here and was invited back into the maestro's good graces. He even received a new suit, but it's a facade. Hulk delivered Hercules a woman believed the maestro would enjoy. This turns out to be Vapor, a former UFO who transformed into Arsine and entered Hercules' body. This spells an end for both the Olympian and Vapor because Hulk blasted her as soon as his rival was down. Dystopia will never be the same. Hulk held a funeral pyre for Hercules and gave the dystopian people another chance to follow him. Still, they resisted. Hulk's a Hulk of his word, so he set his war dogs on them. Dackard, an associate of Rick Jones, had a weapon built by the X-Men Forge that could kill the Hulk. But Hulk disarmed her with a well-placed smash, and something unthinkable happened. Hercules, a blazing fire, returned from the dead. But it was the minister, the maestro's confidant, who landed the fatal shot on his former boss with the Hulk killing weapon. Afterward, Hulk returned to Jones's museum seeking revenge for the weapon only to find an empty bunker. The place exploded, but Hulk clawed his way out of the debris. He takes on the title of maestro, but instead of praise, Dystopia's new leader faced war. Maestro Hulk vs. Doctor Doom When Maestro Hulk made contact with the stalkers in Connecticut, he made his goal clear. I set an emissary to inform them that I was now in charge, that they were to submit to my rule. They sent my emissary's head back on the stick. I did not take well to such a display of disrespect. So unwell that he traveled there personally. He slaughtered them all, children included. Maestro then created a new movement to unite all under his rule. Post-apocalyptic existence or Pax. As his first move under Pax, he rooted out the survivors led by Machine Man, but he was fooled by a copy of the hero. Another bunker exploded with Maestro inside, but he stumbled from the wreckage untouched. Soon, more resistance would begin. The Pantheon, a group of heroes who allied with Hulk in the past, joined forces with Doctor Doom to oppose Maestro. Their plan was to return Maestro back to his puny banner form. This would allow them to imprison or kill him. 
The Pantheon visits Maestro in Dystopia, where he presents the idea of Pax to his old friends. They were all but too accepting of the idea, and this made Maestro suspicious. But would Maestro play along until they reached the group's ship? Pantheon planned to strike the AIM facility that imprisoned Maestro. But as they went up, tensions did too. Maestro took the Pantheon's leader, Atalanta, hostage and demanded to know their true goal. But before he got his answer, high-powered knockout gas filled the cabin, taking Maestro down. Meanwhile, the Pantheon had been wearing nose filters. Maestro was kept in a large tank as the Pantheon debated how to turn him back into Banner. They decided to have Paris, an empath, bring Maestro's alter ego out of his psyche. When the Maestro awakened at the Pantheon's old HQ, he knew it wasn't real. But he was face to face with traumatic moments from his childhood. This includes his father's abuse and eventual murder of his mother Rebecca, which set Maestro off. Infuriated by the intrusion, Maestro started strangling Paris in the illusion which caused him to wake up in the real world. He broke out and fought the Pantheon, managing to take down most of them. But when his mother showed up, Maestro reverted back to being Banner. Then Rebecca shot him dead. Turns out it was all an illusion. Maestro was in the tank the entire time. Dr. Doom then traveled to Dystopia and tried to claim Maestro's throne. But the people in town didn't care one bit. He couldn't be any worse than Maestro was. Meanwhile, the Pantheon kept Banner's body in Duranium, a powerful metal like adamantium and vibranium. As he hibernates, Banner undergoes a therapy session within his mind with Doc Samson. Eventually, Maestro attacked Banner's weaker instincts and painted a very sad picture of the world. All the people you've met, Betty, Rick, the Avengers, they've been trying to weaken you because they're afraid of you. Of what you can do, what you can be, when you release me, trust in me. To prove it, Maestro broke free of the Duranium and killed Atalanta. In retaliation, Pantheon member Ulysses deployed two missile strikes. One was heading for AIM and the other for the Pantheon base. The heroes huddled together in their final moments as Maestro watched the impact from a distance. After the Pantheon's demise, Maestro returns to Dystopia to find Doom sitting on his throne. A fight between these two would be won for the ages, but instead they're shaking hands. What is going on here? Well, Doom and Maestro made a deal to wipe out the two factions that could challenge them, except Maestro immediately poisons Doom to solidify his power. But Doom had taken an antitoxin before the meal. The villains were two steps ahead of each other until Maestro used electromagnets to rip Doom's armor from his flesh. Before Maestro can finish him off, Doom recovers his visor and transports away. This leaves Dystopia back in Maestro's hands, but trouble rises from the destroyed AIM base. An old enemy, the Abomination, was back. World War M Abomination experienced a simulated existence while he was captive. He kept losing to Maestro, conditioning him to hate the ruler. Free from AIM, the Abomination would wander around. It was peaceful until he was mistaken for Maestro by Namor the Submariner and forced to defend himself. But sharing a hatred for Maestro, the two decided to team up. First, they'd ambush Maestro as he inspected the AIM wreckage. But instead of doing so themselves, they sent the original Human Torch to warm him up. Torch let loose a Nova Flame carving a crater across the city. Maestro coughed and readied himself for round two. Torch took off toward the Pacific Ocean and Maestro gave chase, then laying eyes on the underwater city of Pacifica for the first time. Maestro figured the Submariner must be involved. Luckily for him, Torch led the way right to Namor. Maestro fought a giant quadrupedal squid that snatched him up after approaching the throne. He rips free of the beast's tentacles and uses it as a whip, crushing Namor's family in the process. Maestro reflects on his past while doing this. Who knows how many people have lost their lives during my rampages. In the old days, it didn't bother me. These are new days. So much has changed, but my lack of caring is still the same. Namor snaps, lunging towards Maestro before vanishing from sight. Abomination and the Torch join the fight, but they disappear too. The trio materializes at Castle Doom where their host greets them only to crumble to the floor. While Maestro was away, Dystopia's minister tried to carry on as usual but ended up kidnapped by Rick Jones and his resistance. The minister's loyalties are made clear. He doesn't care for the Maestro at all and believes Doctor Doom will be able to destroy him. Doctor Doom, now in a wheelchair, proposes an alliance between himself, Abomination, Namor, and Torch. They made preparations as Maestro returned to Dystopia and then to the Alchemax building, figuring he'd find Doom there. Unfortunately, Namor and Abomination spring their trap. 
Abomination Sucker punches Maestro across the face. In return, he receives a punt from Maestro that sends him out of the skyscraper. Namor then springs his trap, a titanic whale of a beast named Gigantor. As Gigantor nearly stomps Abomination and Maestro into the ground, Namor rides atop him, aware he's stolen the show. Maestro thinks that if he can get to Namor, he can stop the monster from wreaking havoc, but all he gets for his trouble is a short trip back to the palace. Back at the castle, Doctor Doom was losing his mind because Gigantor wasn't part of the plan. Abomination saves a mother and her son only for them to be squashed by Gigantor's destruction. Maestro finally reached Namor but chose to attack the monster's eye. This combined with Namor being transported back to Latveria causes Gigantor to flee back to the sea. Maestro showed some mercy when he rescued Abomination from drowning, leading the two vowing to make Namor pay for the deaths he caused. Abomination lived up to his part of the deal by taking them both to Castle Doom, but they ended up in a cell. So Maestro reverted back to Banner to squeeze through the bars. He freed Abomination, and the two worked surprisingly well together to best Namor and some Doom bots. Things escalate when Doom reveals newly constructed battle armor, but Abomination sends Maestro far away before triggering the torch's Nova Flame. Castle Doom is destroyed, but Dystopia lives on under Maestro's leadership. Maestro thinks about how his kingdom will survive in light of his recent rivals. Villains always talk about conquering the world, but they never seem to think past that. What do they do once they've conquered it? The answer is, of course, they must now protect the people whom they were willing to step on to achieve that power. Maestro vs. Hulk 2099 the Hulk's most consistent and deadly enemy is himself. This is shown a lot in Maestro's reality as he fights many multiversal hopping versions of himself. The first appeared thanks to Proteus, who'd taken over his body of Hulk 2099. Once he arrived on Earth 9200, Proteus was brought up to speed by Rick Jones and given another Hulk-killing weapon built by Forge. Yeah, and his Museum of Superhero Artifacts is back rebuilt from when it was blown up. Thanks to Proteus' appearance, Joan thinks he can get close enough to Maestro to kill him with it. And he's right. The people of Dystopia clear the way as he creeps his way towards the palace. But Maestro works with the exiles, including Blink, Longshot, Morph, Sabretooth, and Spider-Man 2099 to stop Proteus' attack. This alliance doesn't last long, though. Maestro turns on them when he's struck by one of Power Princess's errant blades. He unleashes on the young team and manhandles them all. Spider-Man is turned into a projectile, Sabretooth is sent to space, and he just flicks Blink. During this, Proteus bides his time while Maestro uses his stamina to bring down the exiles. Proteus holds his own, evading Maestro's strikes while putting him in a sleeper hold. A moment later and snap, Maestro's neck is broken by Proteus, and the ruler falls on the spot. For a character with Maestro's power levels, it's shocking to see him so helpless. Longshot and Morph then put up a good fight against Proteus, especially with Morph's shapeshifting ability. This turns out to be a liability, though, because Morph's abilities make it easier for him to be possessed by Proteus, and that's exactly what happens. Proteus jetted from Earth 9200 as soon as he settled into Morph's body. The fight is over, but not for Maestro. He sprawled out on the floor, helpless and ordering the exiles to leave. It's pretty sad to leave this fearsome enemy like this. Maestro would recover well enough when Captain Marvel's conflict with Thanatos came to Earth 9200. This universe-hopping adventure would see Earth 616's Rick Jones, Marvel, Star Fox, and Spider-Man 9200 brought to Maestro's world due to the creations of Thanatos. Thanatos would invite Jones to see his older self in that universe. It's here that Thanatos reveals his true identity. He's also a variant of Rick Jones and a villainous one too. Still, Rick got a better welcome than Marvel and Spider-Man. One minute they're battling a big bad, and next they're in a huge luxury bedroom. They have plenty of questions, but an even bigger problem. They're not alone. Well, well, well. I don't remember inviting any guests. Do you, Minister? It's Maestro in the middle of escorting guests. He isn't happy about being interrupted. Star Fox traveled to Earth 9200 too, but wound up wandering the halls of Maestro's palace alone. Thanatos reached out with important information. The Cloak of Levitation and the Eye of Agamotto are in the palace and he needs them to become the ultimate Rick Jones. So, while Star Fox looks for them, Marvel and Spidey battle it out with Maestro. Their fight went from Maestro's quarters to the outskirts of Dystopia. 
Maestro even started killing his own people to gain the upper hand on the heroes, but until then he's just a pawn Thanatos uses to keep Marvel from fighting him so he can get more power. But a last minute save by Old Man Jones and Mjolnir conquers Thanatos and sets everything back to normal. Maestro grapples Spidey, lifting him above his head to rip him in two. The next moment, Spidey's gone, simply blinking from the Maestro's grasp. He has a bad history with multiversal variants, but hopefully he does better against time travelers. Hulk vs. Maestro Years after his privacy was invaded by Marvel and Spider-Man 2099, a resistance brews beneath the surface of Maestro's dystopia. Dacord is assassinated by the city's enforcers and they almost take Old Man Jones' granddaughter Janice. But another person rose against the rubble of a collapsing building to fight them, Professor Hulk. He sends a message to their boss. The Hulk is coming for him. This threat reaches Maestro during another moment of privacy in his palace. Hulk was brought into the inner circle of the Resistance and met Old Man Jones in his museum. Here, they made a plan to lure Maestro and his forces into an ambush at their underground base. A great idea since most of his forces were wiped out, forcing him to go it alone. And finally, he comes face to face with his younger variant. One might think the younger of the two would have the advantage, but Maestro's been soaking up radiation for a hundred years. One hit from Maestro sent Hulk all the way back to the surface. Maestro wasted no time taking a civilian hostage and almost killed her to egg Hulk on. The way Maestro responded to a weak Hulk punch shows how in control he was of the situation. Game's over, Bruce. I saw that one coming a century away. Another one Maestro had seen before was Proteus. Maestro copied his move and immobilized Professor Hulk by snapping his neck. Maestro then tried to break Hulk mentally, making him see that holding back is robbing him of so much potential. At one point, Hulk is inappropriately assaulted multiple times, but Hulk works with the Resistance to send Maestro to another time, a very specific time. Maestro is sent to cook in the gamma bomb that first created him, back when Banner rescued Rick Jones. This incinerates him, but the story doesn't end there. A few years later, Professor Hulk returned to his normal life of wrestling between Banner and the Beast. At one point, the two are even split up, but when they come back together, their bodies are sent back to the site of the Gamma Bomb. This place is like a mecca for all the Hulks. Less than five yards away are the bones of Maestro, encased in Gamma and absorbing the ample amounts of radiation the Hulk's body is emitting. Meanwhile, within Banner's mind, Maestro taunts the hero with the knowledge that his death will not last. This turns out to be true not just for Maestro, but also for Hulk. Banner regained control over his trauma and was able to save a pilot who had crashed in the crater where Hulk appeared. As the hero disappears into the night, no one notices a mysterious figure slipping away into the Nevada desert. This one looks like it has been through a lot, but it is still alive and moving along as the sun goes down on this gamma-filled day of rebirth. We don't waste any time finding out what happened to Maestro. His body is in different stages of breaking down and healing. He's missing eyeballs, but somehow still has clothing and jewelry. He didn't make it far before collapsing, but was rescued by a group of warlock trolls. They take him down to the depths where they live and then disappear for a while. We redirect to the town of Flagpole, Arizona, where Ross and Banner are having a heated discussion at a diner. Things take a turn when the ground begins to quake, leading the trolls bursting forth in the middle of the street. They are being followed by a destroyer who has a very personal grudge against the Hulk. It manages to goad Banner into hulking out and the fight spills out onto the edges of the Grand Canyon. It is here that the truth is revealed. This destroyer is controlled by the Maestro who is piloting it elsewhere. But when the destroyer steps into Hulk's blood, the hero transfers his spirit to the machine. Maestro fires one last beam, but Hulk closes the destroyer's visor, causing a concussive blast that rocked the National Park. The last we see of Maestro, he's buried beneath the landslide caused by the destroyer's destruction. Well, he's gotten out of worse before, and he was looking strong the last time we saw him. I'm sure he'll be back. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of this story, but be sure to check out our Immortal Hulk video to see the devil transformation he's been hiding for years.